Hello everybody and welcome back to another spoiler review with me, The Border Prince. Today we're going to talk about War of Secrets by Phil Kelly, which is one of these new Space Marine Conquest novels which seems to be uh, an attempt to tie in the novel series with the new lore, the new setting, specifically covering Space Marine chapters and what they've been up to in the new setting. And from the off, I've got to say, this is really, really good. I, I fucking really enjoyed it. It's not what I thought it was going to be at all, but it still captured what I wanted it to capture. And we're going to go into that as we go along. I think probably the best thing to do is tell a rough outline of the story, then go into some details and the bits. But first of all, Phil Kelly. Now, Phil Kelly is a really good writer. I don't see enough stuff from him, but he's also one of the background writers for 40k so he knows his shit man he's one of the guys that's responsible for a lot of the stuff that gets done so he's got a really deep knowledge of it one thing i will mention what the fuck are you doing black library with the quality of your books i've read this once and half the pages have fallen out of it it's really bad um then again it has been very sunny recently so maybe it's just the the, uh, the glue or the resin or whatever holds the pages in as broken but it was a bit annoying because i've had to well, I mean, you know, I can't sell this on eBay now. <laughs> or send it back to Amazon, even. I oh, know I didn't get it from Amazon. I bought it from the shop. And the reason I got it from the shop was because someone gave me some Super Chat money to pick it up. That's an ice cream van in the background. <laughs> anyway, where were we? So, yeah, Phil Kelly is responsible for background stuff. And he's also written a lot of Tao stuff. Now, what you may not realise is that I think a good, like, over half of this book is not related to the Dark Angels, to the Space Marines, to the Imperium. It's fucking Tau. And it was good. It was really, really good. I was super impressed. Okay, so the basic story starts out. We join some Primaris Dark Angels. Well, actually, I've got that wrong. What we join is a, uh, a religious ceremony by some people who are Gervesa, or, you know, they've uh, turned traitor and they've joined the greater good. They've joined the Tau Empire. And, oh, there's so much good stuff in this. Um, they are being attacked by creatures and they say, they are acting as if it's these creatures that have been molesting them or this enemy that's been molesting them and taking them away and some kind of plague has been hitting them um, but it turns out it's not it's actually the Tau using stealth technology uh, using stealth suits and stuff to uh, kill these people these humans and you're like oh okay then we join a squad of Primaris in a repulsor tank and a repulsor tank can apparently sail across the water that's how good the anti-grab is. I didn't realise that, but apparently they can. I don't mind, though. I'm sure that's fine. <laughs> and uh, they're part of a Dark Angels attack force. So normal Dark Angel Space Marines. Uh, say normal. They're Dark Angels. But, you know, Ravenwing and stuff are flying around in land speeders. And they launch an attack on the place. And they come against the Dark Eldar. Uh, the Dark Eldar? Shit. The, uh, <laughs> the um, Tau. And they combat them within this refinery, this massive refinery. It's on this ocean planet. Digs up Prometheum. You know, standard. And, um, yeah. <laughs> I've lost my train of thought completely. So, there's an ice cream van right next to my fucking house. Typical. So, um, yeah. Oh. <laughs> okay, so we're back. I think the ice cream man has stopped. He might reappear. reappear. I don't know. You know what they're like sometimes. They're just zipping around all day. And it's money-making season, of course, in England, because it's red hot. But not really, just hot for us. So, yeah, they fight it out with these guys. Now, as they're um, trying to save the civilians, the civilians... We're going to get into some stuff with the Primaris, but I'm just telling the basic story, so stay tuned for that, because there's some awesome shit about who they are. Yeah, so they progress, and they have a fight. They run across some civilians. One of the civilians has got, psych he's got some kind of psychic plague and, like, blurts out all these horrible... Uh, ectoplasm white shit all over the place uh, it's pretty gross and uh, one of the Primaris just chops the red off which is cool I tell you what like I like Primaris a lot more reading this than I have any of the other Primaris novels so far uh, where they've appeared except for the Dark Imperium one this happens the battle ends and we get some of the uh, interpersonal stuff that's going on between the Dark Angels and stuff but we'll cover that in a moment yeah one of the women the, the, a woman manages to escape. She's like a priest, a leader on this uh, rig. But she gets to another rig. She manages to survive and swim to another rig. And there's a dark angel there waiting for her. They know. They knew she was fleeing, you know. Uh, <laughs> but a stealthy ship disappears as well. That's got a chaos dude on it. And there's dark angels around. What do you think's going on? Anyway. <laughs> they uh, 
they interrogate these women, they get the information they want, and they leave these people, and they leave them to die. Um, these people join the Tau Empire because the Tau offered them salvation, because they're on this planet, which is a, an ocean planet, but it's on like a weird orbit. So every couple of months, it goes into sort of like a freezing phase, where it, all, it just becomes an ice world, and then comes back round and warms up again. But obviously, if any people are on that planet, they're all going to die, because they'll just get frozen to death. So they normally come along, and they have like ships that pick them up, and take them away, and then take them back when it's like refining season. That's how it seems to work, which is pretty awesome. It's a nice, nice idea, you know. I liked it. Uh, then they go to <laughs> the Absolvers chapter homeworld. The battle goes to there, and this chaos dude, who's yeah, he's a he's a fallen. Uh, he, he goes to some little fortress and like turns them all into mutants. <laughs> and conv- he's been spreading this plague, and he starts spreading it to them. And he sends the one guy off to the chapter monastery. The Absolvers are like, they're a chapter of Dark Angels, a successive chapter of the Dark Angels, but they don't believe that they're guilty of the fall, and they think that they've been forgiven, and they don't have to feel guilty about uh, the whole Caliban thing. Which is pretty gross if you're a Dark Angel. Anyway, these guys are uh, reasonable. They seem reasonably decent types, all in all. And, uh, yeah. (laughs) What happens next? Yeah, then the big battle ensues with the uh, Primaris being sent in against um, the mutant hordes that are in this fortress uh, that this Dark Angel traitor dude has uh, gathered to himself. And uh, the Tau show up as well. Now we're going to have to get into some more details, but this is basically the the, the points that happen. And um, they have a scrap, they have a fight, there's a big battle. The Primaris go a bit mental, um, they have to... Because they don't really know what's going on, but they know they're being lied to. Anyway, oh yeah, I'll, I'll talk about the primary separately as a thing. That's the best way to do it. Right, then they have a big battle. The uh, Tau and the Space Marines are fighting each other, but they kind of stop fighting each other a bit to kill these mutants. This chaos army that's now materialised. Uh, yeah, anyway, basically what happens is that the Dark Angels and the Tau agree to a pact. Uh, the Dark Angels will go and kill all of the humans on this planet. I think it's called Solterre Vex. This uh, ocean world. This prime, this pumping world. These are the ones that the Tau were trying to kill. That the Dark Angels so rudely interrupted. And the Tau agree to kill everybody on the uh, Absolvers planet. Because there is the plague. And the plague does not affect the Tau. But it spreads amongst humans. And space marines. And obviously that planet is now infected. Um, it could be saved potentially, but it's probably not worth the risk. And the Dark Angels think that these guys are dickheads anyway, because they won't help them with the Fallen. <laughs> they think they're borderline heresy, you know? So that's the pact that's made. And then we get a bunch of stuff that I kind of need to speak about in detail in separate chunks. So <laughs> basically, towards the end, it ends up with a big conflagration uh, within the chapter monastery of this... Um, of this Absolvers chapter, where they managed to kill a Case, which is one of the three students of Commander Puritoid, along with Oshaba, so Farsight, and uh, Shadow Sun. Now, if you've been following your Tao lore, you know that this is a pretty important guy. And um, he doesn't die, spoiler, <laughs> but um, yeah, he fails in his mission. But that means that this this planet is still infected and it could spread further. So it's not the best thing that the uh, Space Marines won. And it was a pretty good thing. They they used his own arrogance against him and um, just unleashed massive furious power on this dude. But I'll see if I remember to take, talk about that because it was a pretty awesome scene. Right. Okay. So, uh, yeah. And um, all of the other people on the other place die. <laughs> pretty ruthlessly as well. It's quite interesting. So, we have the Primaris. The things I liked about this novel, compared to some of the other ones I've read, is we get a lot of insight into the Primaris mentality. I've got the book here, so you'll hear me flicking through to different bits that are are marked out. So, straight away, we get uh, them moving into battle the first time in their repulsor tank. And they're chatting together. They seem like reasonable chaps, you know. They're not, like, um, overly fanatical like some Space Marines appear. They're a bit more level-headed, it seems. Which makes sense, because they were brought up on Mars, or at least trained up on Mars for a very, very long time, and then frozen and stuff. We all know what's going on with the Primaris, right? So, the chaplain comes over the Vox and says, Commend your souls to the Emperor and the Lion. Strike from a place bereft of doubt. You know, standard chaplain stuff. Big the guys up, you know. Um, Lieutenant, his Sergeant Murakani. 
How do we commend our souls? Does it involve kneeling? Because I'm not sure I used to, <laughs> I wish to be nose to nose with any of you armoured ogrins. Uh, Farron raised an eyebrow, cocking his head. We want to impress our Dark Angel brothers, Peter. Not make them think that Terra and Mars raise only bores. Impress them? Primary space marines are the closest gene sons to the Primarch. We have the true blood of the lion in our veins. Have some respect. These Dark Angels have given everything in the defence of the Imperium for thousands of years. And what have you done in that time, Vasily? Lain dormant in a stasis casket? Explain to me, how does that make you such a hero? I'm not going to carry on reading because I've just realised I've started reading again. I really enjoyed this book. But it's the little things that come out. Now, for instance, we get a little insight into how they were trained on Mars. The fact that they refer to uh, Belisarius' call as Pater Call, which had a disturbing... It, it rang a disturbing bell in my mind because... Um, that's what people call uh, Fabius. They call him Pater. They call him Father. Father uh, Father Mutagenus, I think. Or something like that. And it's like, oh. Oh, what? Oh. <laughs> so, yeah, anyway. Right. I don't put it beyond doubt that possibly Balazarius Call is a clone of Fabius Boyle who decided to actually be a good guy. Or, you know, whatever passes for a good guy on the Imperial side. He's done that type of stuff before, you know. That's where we get with the, the Primaris. And... Throughout the book, there the War of Secrets is a great little story because there's secrets everywhere. It's all the factions are lying about shit. It's brilliant. We get them asking questions about what, well, why is he called an interrogator chaplain? What's that? You know, um, the way the Dark Angels treat them, uh, the Primaris themselves, they 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 doubt them. They don't like them. Um, they think of them as uh, Gilliman's agents, uh, stuff like that. Which is kind of what I wanted. It wasn't quite as as harsh as I thought it would be, but it was. It, got, it, it tapped into that, and I was worried it wasn't going to tap into that at all. Phil Kelly knows what he's doing. He's given us the taste of that, the distrust and stuff, but I wanted more. I did want more. But it's not that kind of a novel. I thought that's what it was going to be, concentrated specifically on the Dark Angels, but it doesn't. It's mostly about the Tau, to be completely honest. This whole thing with the Dark Angels is kind of a side issue. They're sort of big characters in this wider story about the Tau and where they are. So it's it's a really interesting take on the novel. It's it's marketed as a Space Marine Conquest book, but it's actually pretty much, um, yeah, this is what's going on with the Tau Empire. <laughs> but that makes sense with Phil Kelly because he's Mr. Tau. So it progresses from there. We have a lot of insight about uh, the kind of things that the, that, that the other novels didn't really have at all. They seem to miss it completely. For instance, it talks about the uh, Balazarius Furnace, which is an uh, organ that when the Space Marine comes close to death or dies, uh, this organ kicks in and turns them into raging killers so that they can destroy they have a, like an, an extra burst of power to kill people you know, and this is what happens as well so the, the Dark Angels do, he's really suspicious because he's a Dark Angel as well he's, he's super paranoid, because that's who they are you know, <laughs> I don't think even Belisarius could get rid of that uh, they, um, they have a knack for that secrecy uh, <laughs> he goes and rescues this woman who's been kept in this thing. She, he doesn't know she's got the plague thing, the, the mind plague, but he seems to think it's wrong that she's been treated like this because they haven't told him anything. So he's like, what the fuck? So he goes and questions her himself. He doesn't really get all the information. And he rescues her and saves her and sneaks her on board his ship and everything. It's fucking bizarre. Um, it's a bit unbelievable, that, in terms of how it would work. I, I wasn't that into that. Because um, when he gets her back to the battle barge, he even manages to um, get her on her little ship and send her off like on a little shuttlecraft and send her off to safety. Which, again, I don't know, I was a bit like, eh. But, you know, whatever. It's fine. It's not that big a deal. There's also a little bit where he mentions about how the Primaris are stronger. You know, we have the Dark Angels Apothecary, an old space marine, trying to understand their physiology. And this comes into stuff later. Uh, basically, they are uh, mind-wiping the Primaris uh, after every engagement, um, so they don't know what's going on. So, yeah, they come up with a scheme where they're going to activate their Belisarius furnace, and um, that will somehow uh, stop the drugs that the apothecaries are going to use on them to wipe their minds. So when they come back awake again, when, when a keyword's ordered, which is battle stations, they'll awaken and become conscious again. And uh, they're just normally like sat in their tank ready to go to battle. They don't know what's been going on before. It's all just wiped. But because this call thing was activated, this organ was activated, it, it burns away the uh, serums that were being used on them so that they can now remember everything that's happened. And that's how they sort of figure out that shit's going to... Uh, and at the end of the novel, 
Uh, they have a moment where um, you think to yourself that Farron might be a bit of uh, idealistic, I suppose you'd say, and stuff. And basically, the, the civilians have made a deal with some crews. This, <laughs> this is why it's such a good book. There's shit happening all over. They make a deal with some crew to save them from their planet as a last ditch. She gets back to her world and she manages to get in contact with some mercenaries and a crew war sphere shows up and she makes a deal with them to save the civilian population. They all get on board this uh, war sphere. But the Dark Angels come back at that point after because the, the deal with the Tau and they uh, attack the thing. Now, the, the Dark Angels have kind of been using the Primaris as sort of meat shields, uh, using them up, really. And the Primaris know this now because of stuff that I remember. But... They are still loyal sons, and they're like, well, we'll sort this out after the fact. So they have a massive scrap with the crews. They kill fucking hundreds of the crews. It's even impressive to the captain and the chaplain and the librarian. <laughs> they kill this crew warlord who's massive. You know, um, and they kill all the civilians who've armed themselves and fought against them. And obviously this this girl, this woman, comes up to him and is like, you've got to help us, this is terrible. And Farron's just like, on a, on a fucking dime, man. He just flips. He flips. Yeah, so like all the way through, been really reasonable with her, putting himself out for her. But now he's like, "Deal," said Farron. "You're alive." Yes, she said. Thanks to you, our only chance for survival was to link up with these mercenaries and to get as far away as possible. Thousands of us made it aboard to the outer decks, cramped up, cramped but safe, and you gave us that chance. What? I thought you wanted to wait out the great cycle, then return. We cannot. You know as well as I do that we would need to be quarantined. That weird psychic plague, it lies dormant for now. It's some kind of lifespan burning bright, then passing on. But how long before it's back? Farron said nothing. We are striking out for pastures new, she said. Let us go, please. We will find a place far from the Imperium and settle that instead. A new beginning. You have not the, re- the requisite warrant of trade, said Farron coldly. Nor the Primarch's grace to claim a world in the Emperor's name. What else can we do? Shouted Delagio. That's his. That's her mate. Um, we have that she's infected with this plague. We have families on this craft. Hundreds of refugees. Not a trade deal that will see us. As, and a trade deal that will see us to safety. You fired on us, said Farron, looking sidelong at, Ma- at Markins as he tried to hide his flamer amongst the scattered trophies underfoot. You fired on us and sided with the Xenos over your own kind. I fired to miss. I will not. Reaching out a hand behind him, Enrod, his eye sockets bleeding, his eye socket bleeding, placed a reloaded bolt rifle in the lieutenant's hand. Farron nodded his, nodded his thanks. I saved you, I, I saved your life on Saltair Vex, he said, looking down at Deal. I saved it again by getting you off the planet. I will not save it a third time so you can stoop even lower and spread your treason to more deserving worlds. Wait, said Darren, <laughs> said Deal desperately, a single tear appearing at the corner of her eye. She absently wiped it away across the side of her face. It, it left a glowing white streak in the gloom. This will all be for nothing if you... Farron shot her in the head. <laughs> a bit later, Gazar turned his rifle on Diagio and gunned her down, even as Enred shot Merkins in the chest. Let's get this over with, turning away and walking towards the core of the Xeno ship. <laughs> Which I thought was beautiful, because you think it's going to be some moment, and then he's just like, nah, you crossed the line, bitch. You got to die. <laughs> I'm not putting myself out for you anymore. Um, the stuff about Balazari is cool, and the sort of remembrance, the, the reminiscences they have about uh, Mars and uh, their training there and stuff. Those are really good insights into this into this new era, and I, I, I cannot recommend this enough. If you read, I would put this. Uh, it's not as good as Devastation of Baal because that's dealing with a different subject. That's a, that's a fucking hardcore battle, you know. This is more of a awesome thing you, that you need it fills in gaps you know as, as compared to what we've got now it definitely fills in gaps it's essential reading i have to admit um and uh, yeah you can use the links below if you want to pick up a copy <laughs> but yeah now let's get to the tau this is the fucking good oh yeah there's all this thing with this uh, dark angel dude this fallen but he's not really important he's just spreading this plague around that's it that's it really the most important stuff is to do with the Tao Empire. So, here we have the thing. Now, some bits and bobs of this are sort of you might know that being in the rule book, the Tao Codex, and different codexes and things. Things have been mentioned, but it's the first time I've seen it all compiled together. 
and it is incredible. I mean, oh, just to say on the primaries as well, they are actually quite funny. They're likable characters. Yeah, yeah. It's a it's a good read. It's a fantastic read. And the battles when there are battles, it's good. It, it's it's good quality battles and fighting. But it's not too much. It's like he knows when to stop. You know, he doesn't go into extreme detail and it isn't overblown and it doesn't take pages and pages and pages. It's a good mix, and especially with what we're going to get to in a moment. So. Okay, so, where to begin? Okay, I think the best thing to do to try and explain this tear thing is to read a short extract. Now, I thought it was a short extract, but it's actually quite long, so bear with me. (laughs) Okay, I'll try and sum it up and I'll just read some quotes as we progress. I think that's probably easiest. Uh, Otherwise, I'll be reading ten fucking pages of a novel to you, which I don't want to do. So, and you don't want that either. Uh, Basically, the Earthcast... um, were tasked by the Aetherils to try and harness the warp in the same way the Imperials do. Entering the warp, using it to travel fast and stuff. That's the main thing slowing down the Tau. But that's because they are not especially psychically resonant. They don't have psychers. That sort of thing, you know? That's what's holding them back as a great empire. That's why they haven't had a great crusade. But they kind of go for one now. And it's during the uh, Fourth Sphere expansion... Now, if you know anything about Tau Law, the Tau Law, you know that the Tau Empire has expanded in, the, in 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 sphere expansions, and this is the fourth one. Now, on the day they were testing out this thing that was made by using captured Imperial warp engines and captured Crute ones, which they kept secret from the Crutes, they stole a war sphere off them because they wanted to understand their technology. This is why I like the Tau because it's all very nice, and then when you look below the surface, it's not. And that's why I'm going to do uh, something with the Tau in the future. And I'm really hooked on li- watching, uh, listening to some of the audiobooks that they're involved with. And Phil Kelly's one of the main, th- one of the better ones that are writing about them at the moment. He really has a feel for them. He's Mr. Tau. On the day that they're testing this expansion, they've got like a billion Tau, warships, everything, allies, auxiliary forces from all the different races of the Tau Empire, ready to shoot off into the galaxy and expand the Tau Empire even more. Um, the moment they turn the engines on and get going, it's when uh, Cadia falls <laughs> and the warp rift rips through the galaxy and they get pulled along on these shitter warp engines. But they are actually in the warp now, uh, fully, not just skimming the surface like a, like a rock, like a, like a stone skimming the surface of a lake, you know, that sort of thing. Um, they are actually fully in the warp. Now, they just keep going. The Aetherals command them to keep going. This massive fleet is going through. Now... What happens is demons come, obviously, and uh, the Tau don't understand these things. They think they're uh, creatures. I mean, let's have a look. Can we see the... Uh... Yet you saw them, only when I did not look at them directly. They were more like wisps of nothingness drawn into approximations of the Tauun physique. Some had wings, some had tentacles, some had elong- elongated heads or horns, or seared ranks of teeth, or split stomachs, or looked like Guron Shah, with helms like flaming skulls, or wielded blades that looked like slivers cut from the void. They were so strange that Earthcast mind helper teams came for those who looked upon them too long. And one day they attacked, for the for their Kaon was complete, it was, but they did not attack the conquest. He also says um, above here, they did not come for us, not the, for the pure Tau ships, no. They had other prey in mind. So the auxiliaries and the mercenaries, these were set upon by the demons. They fed upon them. They ripped the ships apart. They killed them all. But they didn't go after the tail ships. They just left them. It was only after a long time once they'd been stuck in the warp because the ship, they, they became stuck in a, in, a, in a still part of the warp, trapped. And then the demons started to prowl. Like they could eventually start picking up that there was living things in there. They said they tried to fire on them. They don't understand the demon. They do not understand the demon. But... We get hints here that Oshava, Far- Commander Farsight, does. And we've had hints from that before. And I, I really want to see more of it. This, this whole Farsight enclave thing and, and uh, Farsight with his big magical sword. It's really fascinating to me and I want that explored more. I want to, I want more of that. I'm sure there is some books on it, but I've, I just haven't got around to them. But I will soon. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Uh, they basically come across... They're saved from this by... Some kind of fucked up Tau god that comes out of the ether <clears throat> and opens up a portal for them. And it's like a many-armed god, sort of in the shape of a Tau, but it's got the hands of humans and things like this. And it's like off, you know. It's a twisted version of this. 
Now they understand the war to a to a degree, right? And having they've reflected on what they saw afterwards, because this god saves them from the demons, from being lost in the warp. So it's just the tail that are left. And they uh, appear on the other side of the galaxy. And uh, this is where the so the Tau now are on the other side of the galaxy, which is a clever thing from GW, because how could the Tau be fighting some of the factions or the new factions that they're going to have on the other side of the galaxy? Well, because they uh, somehow managed to get over there and they colonised the chunk of it, so there's two bits of the Tau Empire spread apart. Yeah, all right, whatever. <laughs> it's a good solution. I'll let them have it. Uh, <laughs> but um, they have a nice discussion about what this is. <clears throat> and... Um, Immeasurably so, it had many arms, I think. Some of those were made to nurture, to provide, others to destroy. In physique, it was familiar to us, for it was built much like a member of the Aeon. He paused, lost in memory, and his Shoah winked. Though, that's not a dirty word. Though, in retrospect, it was bulkier, and many of its hands had five digits, as if the notion of human beauty had mingled with the optimal form of the Tau. I found it strangely calming to behold, Master. But I also felt its hunger to grow, to spread its many limbs from the tip of one of the galaxy's spiral arms to the other, to remake everything in its own image. I remember feeling that, and then feeling like it peered directly into my soul. And uh, Kees, uh, who is like a living weapon, he's uh, been fro- sort of frozen in stasis, that's what the Tau seem to do. They, they're best commanders. They sort of imprison them and keep them in stasis so they can pull them out when they have another expansion or in a special moment. So they've got this totem, you know. Uh, something that's someone who's been through propaganda and stuff indoctrinated into the population to be like a hero, and they could they just save them and then bring them out. And these people don't get frozen though, like in imperial stasis. They are awake. They like it's like a torment, you know. And Case has been frozen for like what three hundred years. It's pretty fucked up, man. So Case asks, "You have a theory as to what that creature was, and you abhor the conclusion you reached?" I do. It is the reason no Gervasa can be allowed to live. Nor can any allied race of the Tau come to that. Whoa. Fuck me, whoa. That's major. This is major. My, my, I was like, what the fuck, serious? This is what I, this is not what I expected to hear. Kais raised an eyebrow. I have studied the works of Commander Farsight in the past. As his, as his original mentor, it was always pleased me to see where his conclusions led him. There are hints in those writings and messages between the lines. Hints as another type of creature abroad in the galaxy that is not flesh and blood. And he goes on. You believe that such a thing is possible then? You believe that this entity is an echo of Tao souls? Not as such. There was a sharp intake of breath audible through the communion relay. Then you think that entity to be a coalescence of Tao belief? Twice Blade shook his head. No master, I do not. That entity was not the culmination of wholesome beliefs of our kind. As strong as that force may be. Neither is it an avatar of the Tovar, as some have suggested. I believe that it is instead a corruption of the greater good, a twisted reflection. How can that be? The other races that were with us, they were preyed upon by the creatures in the subwhelm far earlier than us. They must have been seen as more desirable prey, because their souls were loud, brasher, because they could not pass by unseen. That was my conclusion too. They are of that realm or connected to it somehow. The echoes in the sub-realm. They are the reflections of those races that possess mind science. That which exists in two dimensions at once. This is what Commander Farsight speaks of in his reminiscences. (laughs) In first between the lines of those texts forbidden by the Aeon. The entity you witnessed, it was a human god. In a way. That entity was the Gervesa conception of our faith given strength by the other psychic races that believe in the same tenets. We have no God, spat Keese. We do not, and rightly so. He was shaking, but he had come too far to go back now. But to them, even a philosophy can be worshipped. To them, the line between faith in concept and faith in divine being is thin, perhaps even non-existence. They have created a false God. The mind science races have created a God in the image of the Tovar, in the Tovar, they do not do so intentionally. It is testament to the watercasts that they believe so strongly in our ideals, truly believe. And that entity saved the fourth sphere expansion, or what was left of it. Perhaps, if our teaching had not been so convincing, the entity would not have had the strength to open the wormhole, the tunnel through which we passed from one side of the galaxy to the other, and ultimately founded the Nimya Atoll. 
It matters not. This cannot be born. I agree. They must die, every one of them, before they corrupt the ideals of our kind still further. Those who gave rise to this alien conception must be destroyed. Word cannot... Word, and he goes on. Word of this cannot reach set space. We, we would make enemies of our allies as well as our foes. We would be disavowed and exiled, much like Mont Car Show. Um, so, yeah, he goes, he goes on, basically, and he's saying that they're acting to um, uh, kill all of their allies now. Uh, they've decided, because of what they've seen, uh, the, the tale of the fourth sphere expansion... They don't want any shit with bringing in different races into the Tau Var, into the Tau Empire. They want an end to that. Um, these creatures have to be destroyed because they are creating within the warp a Tau God, which is a vile corruption of of that, built, built from the emotions of all the different races, which I was like, that's amazing, that's fucking awesome, no way. Um, and the fact that they've turned, they're like, oh, this is, no, 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 we've got to kill everybody. We're going to have to genocide the entire galaxy, which I like. I like, man. So there's going to be a conflict now between one faction... That, so now there's at least three factions of Tau now. You've got Farsight, you've got these guys, and you've got the actual main Tau Empire that probably won't understand where these guys are coming from because they haven't seen it. Uh, yeah, it's a fascinating thing. And most of the book then concerns Case. He gets given a massive stealth suit, and he goes on a rampage for a fortress monastery, and you have some amazing fucking combat scenes. But it also... It ends. Right, it ends. He gets caught in a trap. He's doing well. He's killing everybody. It's great. He's loving it. Uh, and he's a really interesting character and the reason audiobook I know that I need to get a hold of and, and do some more research on him I have just finished listening to the Democles uh, audiobook but I'll do a review of that in the not too distant future because that was really enjoyable as well uh, but yeah Tev stuff's really fascinating me at the moment but yeah he gets caught in a trap right he's in the centre of this fortress monastery the chapter master has seen what he's been doing and decided that there's only one thing for it <laughs> <laughs> he, um, he he basically target lock. He has a ship in orbit, target locking on a particular point. He lures him to fight him in the center of this thing, and just as he's about to die, um, he puts his helmet on. Keith laughs at this because he's like wasted, he wasted seconds, uh, and, <laughs> and then this fucking lance strike comes in and smashes the Mortis Monastery and takes him out. Well, kind of. He takes out his suit. He manages to flee and uh, survive somehow. Um, but the chapter master, the cheeky bit bastard, he didn't care because he had a displacer field. So the moment any energy touched him, he instantly fucking did a, a swift teleport, like <laughs> 20 yards away or something. <laughs> Which I thought was a nice, nice cheeky thing, you know? Yeah, brilliant. But yeah, uh, that's... I don't know what else to say, really. It's a really good book. It's really engaging. It's got a nice... It's a nice mix of uh, Primera stuff, giving us the kind of thing that I've, I've, I've mentioned before, you know? Who they are, how they work the kind of things they believe, how they are looked upon and how they look upon the uh, Space Marines. And it's more interesting with the ultra, with the Dark Angels as well because uh, they are the most secretive chapter. I wanted a bit more of that, but I'm, I'm happy with what they've presented to us so far. I'm looking forward to more in the future. The brutality in this book is fucking incredible. And now we have uh, genocidal Tau on the, on the game. You know, that's, that's what's going on now. We have a genocidal Tau empire coming soon <laughs> to a star system by you fantastic absolutely fantastic well worth getting not what I was expecting at all but it is high quality it's well written it's really fun it's really different and um, I don't know why this is a space marine conquest story because the other ones have kind of been concerning big events uh, this one this one's just like loads of information <laughs> it's just loads of different characters talking about stuff which I loved you know it's great especially to see things from the Tau perspective and especially with the route that they're going to go down there. Brilliant. Can't wait to see more Phil Kelly stuff. He is Mr. Tau and he does it well. That's probably all I've got to say on the subject, to be honest. I could rant more. I know I've read a lot of the pages in this tier. I just, I didn't know how best to convey it. But yeah, this has been a great book. And uh, once I got stuck into it, I smashed through it within a, a couple of days, um, within a week. It's just, uh, I just haven't been able to do it quick enough. Now, the next couple of books I've got, I've got these two Gene Stealer books. Started reading the one, seems okay. Don't know yet. My old thing, again, is if I didn't enjoy something, unless it was, like, offensively shit, I won't do bother doing a review on it. If something really pisses me off, perhaps I will. But if it's just sort of like, the, I, I didn't enjoy it, I'm not going to bother, you know what I mean? If there's nothing, like, super obnoxious about it, I'm not going to bother reviewing it. That's always been my philosophy since the, from the start with this. Um, stuff I, like, I liked, I enjoyed, I'll do the reviews for you. But, yeah, I'm only going to review things if I truly hate them. 
<laughs> yeah. So yeah, um, yeah, I'll get them Gene Stiller books read, and I'll see if I uh, if I do like them. Then I've got to think about what to read next. I've got a bunch of classics that I've picked up gradually over the last couple of months that I do want to read. For I've got about five old books now that I do want to reread. It's just getting round to. It. Um, but then there's so much new stuff coming out every month. There's at least one book every month I want to read, and I'm already way behind. I need to catch up on Space Wolves. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna shoot off because I'm just babbling now. I hope you enjoyed this review. I do recommend this book. I found it really awesome don't be put off by the cover it's pretty much mostly about fucking tau so, <laughs> yeah if you want to see where the tau empire is in its mentality and the kind of shift that they're going to make now in the law especially with what's going on because there i know the um i've heard that they're going to start moving more towards what's going on on the other side of the imperium that's cut off from terror so new races potentially all that sort of stuff interesting times um if you are interested in picking up this book Please use the affiliate link below in the description. It helps me out and uh, yeah, you'll be getting it from Amazon, which is pretty much the cheapest place you're going to find a book. Yeah, and I imagine, because Devastation of Baal and uh, yeah, Devastation of Baal got an audio book, an audio version a few months after release. I imagine this one will as well, if they're going to keep to um, that sort of pattern. Yeah, I would recommend uh, getting an Audible subscription, which you can use the affiliate link below to do as well. And uh, you're spending a credit and getting this. Because it is... I think I'll do that anyway. Because by the time that comes out, which is like a month or two time, I'll, I'll, be, I'll be up for listening to it again. It was really enjoyable. The characters are great. I really like Phil Kelly. He's, he's done a fantastic job. And the other stuff that I've read and listened to so far has been really entertaining. He's a, he's a good guy. He's a good guy. So, yeah. That's all I've got to say. Um, again, thank you to those of you who are sponsoring me on Patreon and uh, the YouTube sponsorships as well. I really appreciate that. That helps me out a lot. It helps me to buy the books, basically, and uh, cake and whiskey, which is even better. <laughs> or goes towards them. It's not buying it. It's just helping, you know. Anyway, thank you very much. Uh, we will hopefully be back next week with another review, but there'll be law videos and gaming videos throughout the week as we go along. Plus, if anything interesting pops up, I'll try and do my best to... Uh, do a video on that and uh, intermittent live streaming so yeah if you haven't subscribed already subscribe to the channel remember to like and share if you can definitely like though please but yeah let me know in the comments below have you read this book what did you think is there anything in particular I missed anything important um, if there is I might be able to mention it in the next live stream if it's of a, a useful point but um, otherwise I will leave you to it finally <laughs> have a great week and I will See you next time, and uh, yeah, bye-bye.